How's it going? I'm with uh, Monica Gallagher at C2E2 2022. Uh, so, um, what are, uh, so you, not everything you write, but a lot of what you write is uh, very autobiographical. Yes. And, uh, you know, essentially nonfiction comics. Uh, yeah, most of the stuff, uh, yeah, I guess it's half and half, half fiction, half nonfiction. Oh, okay. Yeah. So why, uh, why do you uh, do that? Why uh, why have you gone that route? And, why you know, autobio? Yep, yeah. Um, I think it started as, um, like my first autobiographical book was Boobage. Oops, let's up. <laughs> and I kind of wrote it as a way to, like I was feeling insecure about like my body mm -hmm. and I kind of wanted to like work through feelings that I had. So yeah. I used comics <laughs> as a medium. Yeah. And then that ended up being like my most popular book, which was funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think it, I just have like a, anytime I'm like thinking about like what I'm going through in my personal life, I'll find a way to like turn it into a comic and it helps me process a lot of stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of, it, and it's funny because it seems very specific to me, but people tend to identify with it when it's a true story about yourself. Yeah. So and it's kind of uh, kinda cool. That makes sense. Uh, and, um, also, like that, that, that was good because, like, you know, I, um, it's something, you know, as a cis man, it's like, I, it helped me understand, like, women more, you exactly, know. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's part of the beauty of comics is it can be very specific to someone's individual experience and you can identify with it and be like, oh, yeah, like, I never learned, learned something from it too. Like, yeah. I never knew that and now I know right. more about someone other than myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, it's kind of a taboo subject as well. It's like it's taboo, but it's not. It's, we're, American culture is like a, in a weird place where it's like uh, we're hypersexual, but then we're not. And then boobs uh, obviously very sexualized. Yeah, rude and sexual. It's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and like we're people don't talk about their bodies, and it's, you know. Well, and what are your, some of your thoughts on that? I suppose about uh, about like people being uh, afraid to talk about their bodies, hypersexuality, things like I that. I think it, it's hard because there's so much wrapped up in it and you're right I feel like this country was I read somewhere once that we were founded by not founded the colonizers were <laughs> half pirates and half puritans so it's like we still have those like two clashing yeah ideals in this country about like what's what we can talk about what we can't and it depends you know how you're raised and what you're comfortable with um yeah I, I don't know that's a that's a larger conversation <laughs> it is, yeah. I have my own opinion <laughs> Um, and uh, I mean, also you this uh, you wrote a uh, book about self defense. As yeah, well. uh, yeah, that was um, about learning martial arts when I was a teenager because nice. uh, I was obsessed with them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, these are fifteen. Uh, <laughs> and um, and uh, you you know on, on social media recently you did the whole uh, commissions for fifteen dollars for donating to Planned Parenthood and other yes. organizations. Uh, what? Uh, that's not the first time I've done that. I, it's a, it's been going on for years. Ever since they've been stripping away abortion rights, mm -hmm. I've been. I saw other artists doing the same thing. They were like, you know, if you donate to an organization that supports uh, reproductive rights, I'll give you a sketch. Nice. So that it was hopefully to be incentive for people to um, to donate and chip in. And I've had to do that several times now. <laughs> it's just getting worse. Right. Well, Except that's... for Kansas. Kansas is like Kansas is good right now. Yeah. They're the only ones to actually stand up, but. I, I think it's just we we have to keep tabs on it because they're going to keep trying to strip away our rights. Mm -hmm. So if I can, if that's any way helpful, then I'm excited to like you know, participate. <laughs> so about how many sketches have you done? Uh, I did 20, I guess. Oh wow! Yeah. So that's a lot of money you raised. Sure. Yeah, I mean it's not. <laughs> it's more like. It's a thank you gift to someone for donating, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's not yeah. really you raising the money, but like, you know, yeah. yeah. There um, are some people who have done like, I don't know, huge campaigns where it was like they were raising money or, yeah. you know, they had like a print they were selling or something and all that money they donated, something like that. I haven't done anything on that scale. Mine's yeah. more like individual and little, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like little tiny thank yous. <laughs> So it's it's not actually on your table, but um, I, I did enjoy the comic. Uh, I was a teenage mall model. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> can can you uh, tell tell me about that comic? Sure. Yeah. Well, I wrote that about my experience when I was a teenager and I wanted to be a model, but I was on the older side, so I was 17 and I started, and most of the models were like you know, 12, 13, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like a mixed bag of 
I learned a lot and I've, I've always really loved the modeling industry as destructive as it is. But I learned so much about how destructive it can be to young women specifically, how dangerous for them. And ultimately ended up realizing that that, that was not something I wanted to be part of. I still really respect modeling, but it was it was a very interesting experience and it taught me a lot about myself, like to treat myself better and not be so naive that, you know, someone will just give you everything you want because right. they think you look a certain way. Like models still have to work very hard, you know, like nothing is gonna be I thought like I could just like get a modeling contract and then travel and everything would be perfect. Right. Like, okay, you gotta work your ass off if you yeah. want that. If you want that. But at the end of the day I just it wasn't for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was not something I was ever going to be able to do. But it was a great experience. Cool. Um, yeah. uh, tell me about, this is the one that's more, you know, fiction, uh, Bonnie. That's and, fiction, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so tell me about that book. Well, that one came out of um, my experience. I discovered roller derby when I was like 28 and found the local league in um, Baltimore City where I used to live. And then convinced myself, even though I didn't know how to skate, I was terrified of skating, I was like, I know, I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna learn how to do roller derby. <laughs> and so that comic is about a roller girl who's like really, really good at it, really obsessed with it. And it's kind of like, she brings that energy into her daily life and her relationships. And so it's using roller derby as kind of like a catalyst for like a really boisterous personality. Mm -hmm. But I also like imbued a lot of my experience actually playing roller derby into it. Nice. Uh so who were some of your artistic influences? Um, Wendy Penny was huge um, from ElfQuest. Rumiko Takahashi from Ranma. Uh, Adrian Tomine. Um, gosh, I have, I've had so many over the years, it's hard to <laughs> like. <laughs> but those are those are the big ones initially, I think, that like my style is kind of like, was copying them and then trying to evolve on its own. Uh, yeah. I. I don't know. I see so many artists constantly now that I love. Like there are just so many that I like really respect and adore. But yeah. I think those were the first like influential ones. Makes sense. So why do you love comics? Because there's nothing else like it. Um, it's a very powerful way to tell stories, and it's a completely different experience from reading a prose book. It's completely different from watching a movie. People have a tendency to think that comics are just a script for a movie, and it's an entirely different story. Yeah, I really respect comics and like the experience you get when you combine words and images together. So. That makes sense. Uh, when did you start making comics? I think around like the age of eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then it was like, you know, Garfield ripoffs or Calvin Hobbes rip uh, ripoffs. It wasn't. <laughs> it was nothing original for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Cool. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank you for your time and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs>